is Lisa Miller. I'm from Tea Party WDC, and this is Grace Marie Turner uh, of the Galen Institute, who has written a book about why Obamacare is bad for America. Um, tell me your, your the most salient points uh, in regards to why Obamacare is bad for America. You know, there is there is no way that Obamacare is not wrong for America. It's wrong for families. It's wrong for young people. It's wrong for taxpayers. It's wrong for senior citizens. It's wrong for people with health problems. It's wrong for employers, employees. It's significantly depressing job creation in this country. It is driving up health care costs already. Eighty to a hundred million people are going to lose the coverage they have today. Our health care costs, health, the cost of health coverage is likely to be $20,000 for a family and we're mandated to buy it. I mean, this is really a constitutional issue. The federal government is going to require us to buy a private policy, spend our own money on something that they are defining. There's, that's never happened in the history of our country. And what's, likely, so, and what's likely to happen with businesses is even if we can, say, pay the penalty as opposed to the higher insurance costs, um, likely because the math simply can't be sustained, those penalties will soon supersede the actual cost of the insurance. And one way or the other, you're adding, what, a trillion, if not more, uh, in terms of cost to the taxpayer. You know, and that's really, Lisa, this is really what people get it. I and mean, the Tea Party movement has just been so wonderful in really coming out and understanding there's no free money here. You know, if we don't pay for it ourselves, does that mean our employers are paying for it? Well, they're paying for it out of our wages. If they're not paying for it, taxpayers are going to pay for it, which means we all pay for it. There's no free lunch here. Mm -hmm. We're all going to have to pay. And what we're going to, we're going to wind up being subjects to the federal government, telling us, because you're right, the $2,000 fine in the law now on employers who don't provide health coverage will become a $3,000 and a $5,000 and a $10,000 fine. In Massachusetts, we see that the fines will be equivalent to the cost of health insurance. So it seems to me that whether it be Romney care or Obamacare, um, this kind of uh, setting up of a market ultimately fails. And the reason being is that it is taking, uh, uh, it's increasing the eligibility levels of Medicaid, but it's declining. Uh, doctors are not uh, servicing them. Uh, they don't want to because of the price fixing. Um, and uh, frankly, they have to, to, to make a living at what they're doing. Uh, the same thing's going to be applied to Medicare. So the more we go into this type of system, the less care people will get Absolutely. for much more money. And I think that's when people viscerally understood why we don't want the government to run our health care system. They understood we're going the way of Europe if we pass this law, and we did. We're going to wind up with rationing. We're going to wind up with doctors answering to government, not to us. We're going to wind up with employers not creating jobs because they're afraid of the costs of the fines and the penalties or providing the health insurance. It's going to depress our economy. It's going to completely blow up and open the budget, and it's going to significantly deteriorate the quality of care in America, and we're going to see thousands, hundreds of thousands of doctors leaving practice earlier than they would otherwise would have. Seniors that are having trouble finding a physician now are going to find it even harder when this law goes into effect. Okay, so for me, I'm always about fixing the problem. Um, if we can repeal Obamacare, what do we need to do on a federal level and what do we need to do on a state level to make, uh, you know, bring the cost down through competition, increase choice, increase the number of doctors and nurses, um, and, 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 and through competition um, address more people's needs? Well, the, the, the key is to empower physicians and patients putting doctors and patients back in charge of medical decisions. And in order to do that, we need to allow consumers to be making their own choices and decisions about the kind of health coverage, the kind of health care that they want to receive, not have this dictated by unelected, unaccountable officials from Washington. So if I'm, um, you know, like I have a small construction business, I could find an inexpensive policy with perhaps a less, less coverage but it addresses my need at that time, uh, or if I'm a, a CEO of a company, then I could get you know a completely tricked out uh, plan for much more. Yes. Um, and perhaps uh, those that, that are working poor can afford those policies and maybe perhaps write them off as a business expense. So there are ways in there the market. There are ways we can do it. And there, there's a lot of money in our health sector right now. And it's really, a lot of it is, is wasted. It's spent in, in 
ways that are regressive, we need to figure out how we do a better job of understanding where that money is going and spending it more wisely. And the, if consumers had those choices in a marketplace responsive to them, not to big business and to, to government, then they, the market would reorganize itself around providing people the choices that they want of more affordable coverage. And just as with automobile insurance, people would say, you know, I could have that lower deductible, but it's going to cost me more in premiums. Why don't I just buy the higher deductible policy, and then I will be able to pay for routine care out of my own mark, my own pocket. And you see the market already starting to respond to that with retail health clinics and Walmart and CVS stores and elsewhere. That's the kind of thing where people want quick, easy access to quality care, but they want to be protected from the big stuff. That's what insurance is for. We can get back to that concept. We can afford this, and we can continue to have the best health care system in the, in the world. Well, Grace Marie Turner, thank you so much for your, uh, your review so. today, and thanks for writing this absolutely essential book. I do think it's really, I do think this is the Bible for this issue, for the Tea Party in particular, going forward into 20, 2012 elections. We need to know what's in this law, how it affects us. So why Obamacare is wrong for America, available on Amazon. I hope people will get it. And thank you very much, Lisa, for all you do. Thank it's you. Wonderful.